Hello and welcome back to day three of the News Who Debates. We've just had uh, an exhilarating athletics officer debate and we are now going to have our activities officer debate. We've got our lovely candidates here. Um, I'm not Nav Baragitha, I'm Muslim Thassir. Nav Baragitha could not be here today. But we've got Lily Johnston, Chiara Blows, Harris Qureshi, uh, Juan Liu, and Matt Hall. And then we've got Maud Webster moderating and uh, Harris Nadim, the current activities officer, co-chairing. So give everyone a big hand, please, the people in the room. Thank you. And now, uh, take it away, please, Maud. Okay, hello and welcome to the debate tonight. We have six candidates standing for this position of activities officer. So we will mainly ask general questions on themes discussed by multiple candidates in their manifestos. However, those in the room and those listening on the live stream are free to ask their own questions addressing candidates. Firstly, I will read uh, New Sue's statement of respect. So New Sue uh, welcomes all Newcastle University students to the 2022 election debates organized and broadcast by New Sue student media. Our priority is to facilitate a fair and democratic election, and we believe in the freedom of speech and the right for all students to express their views. However, we will not tolerate harassment or discrimination of any kind. We ask that at all times you treat fellow students, colleagues, and staff with respect. Anyone displaying rude, aggressive, or un other inappropriate behavior within the online chat or in the room will be immediately removed and will be unable to play an active role in this or future debates relating to the 2022 student elections. Um, so we're gonna start with opening statements um, and the candidates will be given one minute each to introduce themselves and their manifestos. Um, if we start with Lily, please. Hi, um, my name is Lily. I'm a current fourth year biomedical master's student. Throughout my time, uni societies have played a really important role for me. Uh, most of my friendship groups and my current and past housemates are all from societies and people I've formed friendships with. I have amazing memories of getting involved and discovering new things that I like to do. Um, I've been on several committees, um, and when I look back at my time here, I've had many great experiences, but societies have remained very important to me. I have a huge amount of fancy dress, and I want that for everyone. I want that for the people that, that, that start, and I want that for people who are already students here. I want everyone to have the same memories of university life and to discover what it is they enjoy, enjoy doing. I want societies to be more open and welcoming and to promote accessibility and to boost membership. I want to focus on collaboration, making it easier to host events and to diversify your membership. And I want better training and support for students' needs, including better accessibility signposting and mental health first aid training for all committee members. I want to rework the Earn Your Stars um, incentives um, so that there's better incentives and there's more um, want to do them. Uh, I think Give It A Go sessions and volunteer sessions are really important and should be included in those. And I would like to widen the participation bursary to include more students. I have a lot of experience and a lot of enthusiasm to take forward into this job and I'm excited for the opportunity to do that. Great, thank you. Um, Kiara now, please. Hi, I'm Kiara Blows and I'm an international student from South Africa and I'm currently in my third year of biomedical sciences. So my manifesto includes collaborations within the um, wide range of things in the SU. So clubs, societies, give it a go um, and go volunteer because I think students would really appreciate getting stuck in um, with all that the SU can offer. I think due to COVID, there's quite a gap in the current committees being fully aware of what their role is and um, aware of the SU in general. And so I think having facilitating smooth handovers and training of all shapes and sizes will be quite necessary. I'd like to societies to strive to be more inclusive. Um, so I want to streamline the Earn Your Stars initiative to make it easier for societies to complete and achieve and also why it's so important. The varied experiences I have in the SU from being president in societies, a nightline public face, activities assistant, and sat on the exec societies committee means that I can support and direct students to have a great year. Great, thank you. Um, Harris, please. When deciding who to vote for, there's a very simple question you should ask yourself. Who do you prefer? A candidate who's going to spend a month, a few months, first term, settling into every aspect of the role? Or would you like a candidate who can start enhancing your student experience from the very first day in office? Manifest of pledges are nice and all, but they're stretch goals. Because when you do the job, the things that other candidates are pri think, that think are important today might not be relevant next year. What would be the priority are you know, the issues that arise then, the meetings we sit in. Um, and after all that, once all that's dealt with, then manifest of pledges are what's important. So it makes sense to vote someone in who's only time to acclimatise to all of this because like dealing it efficiently from day one 
and leave more time to dedicate towards supporting you and enhancing your experience. And if you agree with all that, you need to vote for me. I co-founded uh, New Cats in 2014, barely a month of being a fresher, and ever since then, I have been supporting your student experiences uh, whether you know it or not, every year, one way or another. I've sat on committees half a dozen societies, most of whom have won awards, and I've been awarded a couple of myself, not to brag or anything, but, and I've been on the size deck committee four times. I think I have the historical knowledge of what's been tried and what currently works. So for that reason, I would urge you to vote for me. Thank you. Um, Zuan, please. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Xuan Liu, I come from China, uh, my major is the MBA, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm working for the uh, Chinese Students Scholar Society and uh, serving as the Vice Minister of uh, Tourism. Uh, we organized uh, many on-site and outdoor events, like uh, basic shopping trips. Uh, actually, I have uh, six years of work experience and uh, three years of management experience. So um, I'm good at communicating and uh, get along with people. So uh, I have strong negotiation skills and uh, rich experience in organizing uh, large-scale events. And therefore, uh, I'm very familiar with the process of organizing activities and the students' participation interests. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and finally, we have Matt, please. Hi, I'm Matt, and as you might have guessed by now, I'm running for activities officer. Um, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a third year history student and president of the UNICEF Society. Um, my core manifesto points are about making societies able to give back locally, nationally, and internationally, um, ensuring that societies, especially new societies, have far more support than they get now and adequate training. And finally, to make sure that societies and the union in general work for everyone, um, are equal, inclusive, and safe environments for everyone. So if you want to give back, to have more support, and to have a union working for you, vote Matt for that. Great, thank you so much. Um, so we'll move on to questions now. Um, a kind of general question for all candidates. Firstly, so multiple candidates have addressed uh, the idea of cross-society collaboration in their manifestos. Consider considering the quantity of societies, um, roughly 180 at the moment, how do candidates intend to encourage or structure this? Um, who wants to go first? I don't mind starting. <laughs> yeah, do you want to go, Kiara? Um, so are we, um, as a society um, of dance club and RAG, recently held um, New Classic Come Dancing, and so that's kind of one of the experiences I have uh, doing it across clubs and societies, um, but we also do, um, we've got like Zumba and BioSci as well, and I think having there a system to maybe reach out to other societies to kind of um, say what you like to do, because obviously if you think about science and Zumba, they might not go together, but they both might appreciate meeting new people and encouraging that, and um, Give It A Go is also a fantastic program that can do taster sessions, um, and then if people want to do collaborations, um, the Give It A Go team might also know who to direct them to. Great, thank you. Um, would anybody else like to comment on this question? Sure. Yeah. Um, I think that there's definitely scope for this to be on the website maybe, um, on, on the NUSU website. Um, I'd really like to see societies be able to host each other. Um, I too have worked with RAG and MedSoc um, and hosted Bingo, uh, which was really, really great. But when you host other societies and events, you then, you sort of have to do all the work. And actually, you could definitely streamline that onto, um, onto the website um, to make it easier to reach out. I think especially in the cases of sober socials, um, they tend to be not the best attended. And actually what would be really good is if you have a society um, where their activities, so for example, playing board games, might lend itself really well to a sober social or more of like a sports thing like rounders, then those collaborating um, with other societies then might make that a lot better to, to host a bigger and a more diverse um, sober social event. Um, so I definitely think this is something that could be put on the website um, to make it easy. You've got all the contact details there um, and to allow societies to host each other. Great, thank you. Would anybody else like to comment? Um, so I know that UNICEF Society has tried to do collaboration events before. We have been in contact with societies like Baking Society, um, and honestly, a lot of the time it's just not feasible. Either people don't have time. Um, so I think what would be really beneficial is if there was a way for societies, a place, a dedicated spot for them to say we're open for collaboration. Here's the type of thing we want to achieve, and then other societies can contact them through that, rather than having to reach out individually. 
Um, and also I think we can go beyond just inter-society collaboration. I think a really great point was raised in the welfare officer debate about um, well-being society activities um, and also working with sports. I think there's great space for collaboration there and I think it would just take all the events to the next level. Great, thank you. Um, Harris or Xian? Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, uh, maybe um, just like uh, social activity, uh, I think maybe uh, offer all of the uh, departments uh, maybe uh, have their talk uh, cooperation and maybe mm, you know uh, some students maybe don't know uh, which activities is happen or uh, just uh, uh, even uh, they won't check their email or some advertising but if uh, all of the uh, uh, de department the social and uh, can uh, to promotion together and uh, get more information and to just uh, like their uh, 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 just like just like the uh, uh, accommodations, they uh, like uh, uh, I I advertising. So uh, uh, about the website and the uh, uh, the uh, specific uh, information to put it in a building or just uh, talk to the uh, different uh, people uh, or just like or work um, uh, uh, worker. So we can to uh, exp uh, explain more. So uh, I think it is uh, uh, good, so thank you, uh, just so, thank you. Great, thank you, and Harris? Yeah, I'm glad you asked this question, because I did notice a couple of candidates did mention cross-site collaboration, and many uh, activities officers in the previous years, like a few, a three or four of them I've worked with, have tried to form cross-site collaboration efforts. They've done things like form polls on the website, socials, networking things, and they've not quite worked. And I think what's missing in here is the incentive, because the, uh, so societies working to do collaborations already happens, and that's, that's them actively doing so. If you want to encourage that, there needs to be more incentive, because the ones who don't want to do it already aren't going to then magically start doing it just because you've created opportunities for them to do so. They want there need to be a reason. So I think that's what's missing. If the, first, I actually want to check there's actually a demand for this, because a lot of people ask about cross-site collaboration, but it's not particularly hard to do if society wants to do it. So if there's a, an issue about an actual barrier to access, find out what that is, first of all, rather than you know, thinking I know what it is, um, and find out if there's a demand for it, and then once I know what the barrier to access is, I can create an incentive that overcomes that barrier to access. That's the way you want to go forward with this. Everything else that's already mentioned has been tried. Great. Um, and Matt, do you want to comment um, on that? I just, I'd have to disagree slightly. Um, I do think there is appetite for crossover events, and a lot of the time, so in my own experience especially, um, it's hard to find those societies that have the time to do crossovers with my society um, in the past anyway. Um, so there is definitely appetite there. And I think if we put in measures to ease this, I think it would aid those societies that maybe just can't, don't have the reach to um, partner. Yeah, um, Harris, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, cool, so the, the, you've, accessed, you've identified one barrier access time. What's the solution to create more time for them then? No. Um, you, yeah, half, half a minute response here. Um, I'd say no. I'd say if a society doesn't have the time to partner with you, that's obviously not going to work. But having a dedicated space where you can go and find other societies that maybe are willing to partner with you, and then maybe changing your plan slightly, editing the type of event you're doing, I think there are societies eager to do partnerships that can't at the moment because they don't know where to look. Harris, you can have a 20-second Okay, so you've got the society that wants to part partner, give them the space, how do you get in the, the other societies who haven't even considered this, they might not have the time to do this, even if they're the fit. You know, you're, you're creating a matchmaking service, but how you've got, you've got the active participants, but how do you get all the passive participants that you're mentioning into that? Um, we're going to move on in the interest of time to audience questions, so we're going to take one question from the audience. All right, guys, so if you've got a question, please give me a hand raise. Come on, guys. One question, not that hard. Come on. Oh, oh, we've got two right here. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to that side of the room first, for no reason whatsoever. Hi, uh, uh, I just wanted to ask how um, or if you have any plans to tackle any issues of misogyny that might arise in some cultures, in societies, or um, yeah, that's my question. How how would you tackle misogyny or any sort of behaviour like that in societies? Thank you for your question. Um, should we start with Matt? Yeah. So, but as part of my manifesto. I want to make it compulsory for the activities officer to, especially when making the training, maintain regular contact with all the elected liberation officers 
So that would include the marginalised genders officer, officer, you know, LGBT, um, Q plus officer, um, just to make sure that training is fully informed and that the specific welfare and um, you know the guidance is there, and also to maintain this contact through the year. Um, so if there's any ongoing issues, they can be rectified. And also in terms of creating a safe space, one of my flagship policies is the society survey, which would um, signpost people with serious issues such as sexual assault to the correct services so they can get it. It's easy to understand and quite timely process. Thank you. Um, Xian? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh uh, actually, uh, uh, I think just like uh, uh, deal with this issue, uh, I think uh, uh, we can uh, combat the, some, you know, uh, social problems or just uh, or uh, use uh, the make the best use of uh, our university's resource. Just like uh, uh, my career or uh, something, uh, you know, uh, we uh, can support us and we can to a community community more, uh, communicate more. And and uh, uh, we can to uh, focus on the different uh, student uh, role, just like the international student, or not just uh, uh, the you know the UK student, or maybe uh, because uh, uh, in in our university, uh, most of the students is come different uh, uh, region, different different country. So maybe uh, we just uh, focus on the more uh, situation and to uh, focus on the different uh, social culture. Maybe we can deal with this. Thank you. Thank you. Harris? So firstly, specifically on misogyny, the first thing I need to do is recognize I'm not the authority on that by any means. So it's going to the people who are. And as a former liberation officer, I like to think I always have a good working relationship with you know, the incumbent officers, whether I am one or not. Um, so it's going to the Madhya Jones officer. I've always been part of liberation societies and wearing the logo of one right now. So it's going to societies like FNT, FEMSOC, getting them to, you know, lead on that and then, you know, create the, to tackle issues more intersectional, uh, in a more intersectional way. Minor Gap, Dan Sock, um, LGBT, Q plus society, and you know, getting the people who actually have lived experiences to lead on that. Um, I have lived experiences of issues, but not misogyny, so that wouldn't be, I wouldn't be not be the authority to address that, I wouldn't dream of being so. Great, thank you. Um, Kiara? Um, one of the, the things that I think would be quite important is um, obviously the new committees probably wouldn't know if those issues, so I think some way probably an anonymous feedback survey for the current committees to flag those complaints and then to kind of restructure that training to include microaggressions um, and to tackle those because obviously it's not going to happen overnight. It is quite a systemic issue, I think, but just to kind of, we are the new kind of generation coming in, so to just strive to kind of do as much as we can. Great, thank you. And Lily, finally, please. Um, I actually completely agree with Harris. Um, I think that this is th a very intersectional approach to this would be really helpful, um, including LGBTQ, marginalized genders, and then of course, um, like FEMSOC, and it happens here as well. Um, I think anonymous feedback forms or check-ins regularly, um, sort of like what Matt said about checking in with um, societies, um, could be anonymous, could not be. Um, to make sure that, that any any issues are kind of aware at least um, and then can be can be brought forward to be tackled. I think as well, um, just ensuring that it is something that is on members' minds. Um, so when we have training um, about safety and, and especially safety on nights out and stuff, um, obviously that's a concern for everyone, but it is especially a concern for women. And I think that making sure that we, we protect those people on nights out is really important. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to ask a question. So a couple of candidates referenced the Earn Your Stars program in their manifestos, um, where societies are encouraged to work towards being inclusive, particularly around diversity, disability, and mental health. Um, do you think this current program does enough to encourage inclusivity in societies? And if not, how would you improve it? Um, and do your policies contribute to making new Sioux societies more inclusive? Um, we'll start with Lily this time. Um, I, I think the, the Earn Your Stars incentive, I think it's a good idea, but I think that there's more that can be done. Um, firstly, in terms of accessibility, it should be on the website or on events. Um, you know, if, if you are hosting an event, I think it's really important that accessibility to uh, events is, is listed on your website or is listed on your Facebook page or whatever. Um, so I think that that is definitely something that should be brought into Earn Your Stars. I think the give it a go sessions um, and, and volunteering, I'd like to make it much easier. 
I know sort of Go Volunteer is kind of a separate part of the union, but I'd like to make it a much easier for societies as a whole to go on a, a volunteering project. And again, that is something that I think could be brought back into Earn Your Stars. Um, as far as as far as like incentives go, um, I think we we could definitely offer things like um, hosted events or subsidised trips um, places. I think that that would maybe work better than a monetary um, reward because a monetary reward relies on the society to then know what to do with that money. And actually, if we set out kind of clear things of we will subsidise a trip here or an event here, then that might actually encourage more people to get involved. Great, thank you. Um, Kiara? Um, I think I agree with a lot of what you've said, that it is a good starting point, but it does need more. And I think trying to be inclusive itself, the form is quite niggly to fill out and things like that in itself. So um, a way to kind of make that a bit easier and more accessible to actually fill out and what's kind of expected of you. Um, in terms of incentives as well, I think monetary again you don't really know necessarily what that's going for so to kind of encourage them that way but i think also educating the members so that they know why being inclusive is important and again to highlight in the training that any event you do host in your risk assessments or anything after that you do need to kind of put somewhere the accessibility um requirements or and also be aware again what kind of members you have i mean we've got something marked for under 18s but nothing else after that Great, thank you. Harris? Yeah, I just want to echo what Lily said. I, I, the STARS scheme is nice, but I don't think it does anything near enough. Um, it's, I, I don't think it does enough. To, I don't think it educates. It, it's a, it, it, and that's crucially what you need to do to educate people. I mean, I've been in societies that have completed the STARS program, and I can't remember what I did to get the STARS, and I've got it somehow. Um, so I think what needs to happen is that you need to, you need to do more EDI programs, but not the corporate EDI, because I'm very, very critical of this idea of you know, corporate EDI. I've even said that to Nussu when I've gone to Nussu focus groups and be like, I can tell when EDI is you know, very, uh, very corporate. Um, and as someone who's had a background you know, as a former disability officer, has uh, done conferences in Minor Gap and done uh, things through DanSoc, I, 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 in my mind, have a better idea of how EDI should work. And I think that places me well to kind of you know, introduce that to Nussu and then hopefully the wider education system as a whole. Great, thank you. Um, Xi'an? Uh, yeah, um, I think um, uh, maybe uh, just uh, focus on the diversity, and I, oh, I think uh, I uh, can't leave that the, uh, um, uh, the, the, the culture's diversity and the activities of diversity. So if you want to uh, focus on uh, all of this, and uh, uh, maybe we should to, uh, allow more different uh, uh, students to uh, take part in, and uh, uh, maybe we can to, um, uh, uh, just uh, put uh, the, uh, uh, to focus on the different, uh, maybe uh, culture or festival, or no, not just uh, like the, uh, or, uh, now or, uh, or activities we just uh, going on, so maybe we, we have some I innovation or some uh, different uh, organized, uh, maybe we, we a new idea to correct this. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, and finally Matt, please. Um, surprise, surprise, I agree with pretty much everything that's been said. Um, <laughs> um, I, th I do think one area, particularly coming from a fairly small and somewhat struggling society, um, I do think shifting the focus much more onto education would be beneficial. I think extra requirements for committee members who already sometimes feel overworked can be stressful. I think maybe changing some requirements, maybe um, a training session um, that is, is optional but necessary for the award, things like that. I think shifting the focus to education, making sure that society committee members know what they're doing and know what um, where to signpost to for different issues and things like that, um, and how to fill out these sort of um, equality diversity risk assessments, as, if, as it were, um, would be beneficial. Great, thank you. Um, Harris, do you want to ask a question? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, um, booking rooms for societies uh, has always been an issue uh, due to limited space on campus. So, what are your plans to tackle this issue? Uh, I'll start with Chiara. Um, so I think something that's quite important is um, it's probably an issue of equity rather than equality. Certain societies are going to need rooms more if they need them to practice um, for rehearsals and things like that compared to other societies. So I think kind of figuring out what they need 
at the beginning of the year is probably more important than to see, obviously, to a certain extent, how much you can actually um, live up to that. And also, um, I am aware that Newcastle students are a able to access Northumbria University rooms um, because we are insured with them, but we they aren't insured with us. So again, to kind of explore that route as a possibility, but I'm not an expert in that, but it is just kind of a route. And I think the main point is to make sure that the people who need the rooms have like expressed how much they need them and how often. Yeah, I'll go to Matt. Um, yeah, so different societies definitely need rooms more than other societies. I know a society like um, Nuts will need it for rehearsals. Um, same with um, Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, and I think one thing that could be done is, because I understand it can be quite difficult to find any extra space, um, I think just if you can't find a room that there is the advice there, um, contact to, um, you know, just sort of look into the alternatives. I know that you can, well, the library's 24 hours. If you're just having a committee re meeting, you don't need a 15-person room in the SU. I think easily just signposting people to say, how many people do you have? Here are the rooms that are available. Use this instead, um, would just be really beneficial. Right, thank you. Lily? Um, so I, I've been the, the social sec of two societies at the same time. One of them was really small at the time, and one of them was RAG, which was really big at the time. And I often found that when I wanted to book rooms for RAG, it was quite easy. And when I wanted to book rooms for Rounders, which was quite small at the time, um, it was often a bit more difficult because a lot of the bigger rooms would then be preserved for the bigger societies, which I understand. But I think that ultimately, remembering kind of smaller societies, giving them the same um, access to, to rooms is really important. And I think probably, you could definitely, I think, work this into sort of a tier system. So what are the needs of that society? Um, what are the activities that they're going to do in that room? Because I know uh, when booking things through RAG that there were certain things, health and safety policies and insurance and all of that, that might change depending on the activity we're doing. So you could create a tier system and categorise into that tier system what it is that you need that room for, how many people are going to be there, what the activity is, and then show you those available rooms that are appropriate for that so that you don't end up, um, I think it was Matt said, you don't end up with a, a, a small committee meeting in a massive room and vice versa. Right, thanks. Uh, Zwan? Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, about the booking room uh, this show, I think uh, mm, the first uh, we should to uh, have the uh, uh, just like a list, uh, if you if some society want to book a room and uh, uh, what which activities they, they want to open and uh, which uh, uh, how many people they they need to book this room, so they should to uh, 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 concern they, this. And the second is about the um, room space, uh, uh, just like the library and the Northumbria schools uh, we can use. And uh, another one I think is about the business partner. If we have some business partner, uh, we have uh, some uh, communi communication and to can borrow their room and we can to make a big use of this and uh, can enhance our relationship with each other. I think uh, it's better. Thank you. And finally, Harris. Yeah, I just want to echo what's being said before that I definitely would take an equity approach rather than an equality approach because that's pragmatically the best thing to do. But this is definitely a problem that's been brought up every single year for the last eight years. Uh, so I think it'd be hubris to imply that, you know, in a short term or even perhaps a year, it'd be definitely solved. But I would maintain that as a, a, a candidate, I would be the best place to kind of make as enough of a substantial change that then that could be carried forward and, you know, have a improvement in a Bit, bit time after that, if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making changes that actually stick. Um, and I have a background in room allocation. My day job used to be the room booking system. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or if that makes people hate me. Um, so maybe I should mention that, but anyway. Um, so I, I think, you know, and I, I, I've managed to figure out tricks to kind of get around a system and, and get spaces for my societies. Now, that's me as a committee member of a society. If I'm like a TV officer and I have that kind of background and skill set to do that, that's something that I can then start to kind of push and campaign to get into a wider reach so everyone can access the kind of benefits that I've managed to kind of negotiate myself. Right, thanks. Uh, would anybody of you like to comment of anybody answers? Um, if not, we're going to move on to audience questions now. So does anyone in the audience have a All question? All right, guys. And also remember, Sorry. if you want to submit a question online, um, if you're watching on the live stream, please do. 
Yep. So again, if anyone's got a question, please give me a little hand raise. Hi guys. Um, so big question is obviously a Sparkle team is uh, Sparkle obviously it's part of the back Sparkle team. Obviously you have a lot of stabs. What would you do to work with them to ensure that you are a collective team working together for the same goals? Um, let's start with Harris this time. I think I have a lot of uh, you know being a, my, as many different committees that I've been in. I've got a lot of experience of kind of dealing with you know groups of people, and I have developed over time the approach where you know I'm not afraid to rock the boat. I'm not afraid to tell people that I think ideas are wrong or dangerous, but then I also have a ability to recognize a area where compromise and mutual ground is found. I was in a meeting today where the very, very thing happened where there was a discussion that I wasn't happy with, but you know, the grand scheme of things, you have to then approach the middle ground and go with it um, for what's best for, for everyone. You know, it's, 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 it's teamwork and it's, it's, it's experience and it's knowing how to discuss in a professional environment. And I've got at least eight years of doing that. I, you know, everyone who comes into, into a sabbatical officer role is doing it because to some degree they're passionate about the same thing I'm passionate about, student activities. So we've all got the same goal in the end. Thank you. Um, Matt? Um, so yeah, I think sabbatical officers working together um, is really important. I think the activities officer in particular is in quite a unique position because societies in general, they have just such a wide range of different um, sort of activities and focuses. And I think there's space to collaborate collaborate with each of the um, sabbatical officers, whether that's um, working with the education officer, like I know um, History Society has been publishing info about um, issues about strike mitigation currently. I know, um, so working with the athletic union officer in terms of um, sport and society collaboration. I think um, working with um, the wellbeing officer, like I said before, to just put a big focus on well-being and maybe facilitate, facilitate some mindfulness events or things like that. I think there's loads of space for collaboration, especially in this position. Great, thank you. I'm gonna go to Lily next. I think that this is all just about working towards a common goal. Um, it's important as um, any of the officers that we're always thinking about what the other officers' goals might be. Um, so as activities, you also want to think about welfare and you want to think about sport and all of these things come into what you are doing. And so I think that everyone working towards the same goal, coming at it from different perspectives is really healthy and a really good way to, to collaborate and, um, and to introduce teamwork. You know, there's a reason that office in the SU is open and I think like that's, it's so important. And yeah, um, I think that, that working together towards the same goal or similar goals and coming at it from different perspectives is absolutely how you would make that work. Great, thank you. Um, Joanne? Oh, yeah. Um, I think uh, the important is that uh, we should to find more opportunity to commu uh, communicate more and uh, uh, the teamwork is very important, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the different uh, society or different uh, organization, maybe we, uh, w w maybe we don't have the uh, same uh, um, goal or something, but uh, we should to f uh, focus on the the one thing is that we want to do the best thing. So maybe we can to communicate more and uh, can tell them uh, what we can bring to each other and uh, 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 what we need their uh, help. Nobody can re refuse uh, to f help others. I think so. Uh, is uh, uh, the uh, my my point of view is uh, uh, communicate is very important. So uh, to just uh, um, enhance uh, contact with each other. Thank you. Thank you. And can I remind candidates to speak into the mic more, please? Um, just leaning <laughs> leaning closer. Um, and finally, Kiara, please. Um, I just want to say I agree with every, uh, everything everyone said. I think working together towards a common goal of the student is what we all need to keep in mind, and it is from a different perspective. Um, and then saying that communication is probably vital in that. And as we've probably all seen, ISABs currently <coughs> often have like team meetings or team breakfasts, and just a way to kind of check in and link that you are all working towards that common goal, because everyone obviously does their own campaigns and has their own things that they're working on. But um, again, to just communicate that with each other, update plans, kind of bounce ideas off each other. I think just knowing that you're all in it together is probably how everyone's gonna work well together. Great, thank you. We're going to take um, one more audience question. 
All right, guys. So again, we've got. Uh, please give me a little hand raise, and I'll go with Fergus here because he's closer. Um, as sabbatical officers, you've got a really good opportunity to speak to uh, the university at a high up level where change is actually going to be made. Uh, we have monthly meetings with, um, with the vice chancellor, uh, with the exec board, uh, with uh, people like Lucy Backhurst who aren't actually just an email, they are a real person. <laughs> um, and you end up in a really good position to actually enact change. I think we're seeing Liv's doing great work with uh, uh, the PEC review system. Harris at the moment is looking at um, student sense of belonging, particularly around um, freshers. So given this unique opportunity, what is it that you want to take to the university to try and see positive change for student experiences? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> let's go to Lily first, please. I think that, that COVID really highlighted a lot of um, a lot of really positive things and also issues. It's a very unprecedented situation. Um, but I think that a lot of students felt that communication was not the greatest. Um, it's interesting, like you said that um, about Le Lucy Backhurst being an email, it's like, should somebody who holds a really high position in the SU just be known as an email? Or should we know who they are and what their job is and what they do? And I think like, actually that communication, that almost um, kind of constant reassurance and check-in with students would be really appreciated, um, especially to, to students who are feeling that, that they are not being listened to, um, PEC uh, the PEC system I think is good but could be improvements made um, and I think that overall sort of widening what we might consider for a PEC um, is, would be really helpful to a, a vast majority of students. Great, um, thank you. Harris? <laughs> Um, eight years worth of grief. I, don't, I think they did did be overwhelmed by what I've got to talk to them about. Um, it's 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 actually something I've I've made the most of before. When I was a disability officer, I had the years of several people within the university through that role alone, and I was able to make some degree of welfare changes, um, which I hope have improved in in a small little way. But you know, small small ways are the first step to making big changes. Um, I definitely would come. I think the first thing I'd tackle them with in my kind of laundry list of of grief is uh, from definitely welfare. It's it's my other kind of backgrounds apart from general student activities is liberation of uh, societies and welfare things and you know it's uh, university <laughs> it, education system is brilliant it's terrible so I might as well start with my own university and it, it, it's no different it's 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 universities are not built I'm a civil person a civil student universities are not designed for civil students at all they're, they're built on a platform for able-bodied students and <laughs> you can't fix that you've got to rebuild it from scratch and that's a big task it's not something I'm obviously going to fix that obviously you know issue of hubris but that's where I'd start Great, thank you. Um, Matt, please. Um, so I think my main focus would have to be all around student safety. I think if the past few years have taught us anything, it's that as an institution, the university really needs to do more to support people, particularly marginalized groups. I mean, I think um, it was just a year ago, um, the like, anniversary of um, the murder of Sarah Everard, um, and I think tackling misogyny and violence against women is something that just really needs to have a lot of work done it and then even um, LGBT hate crimes they have had a very steep rise in the past few years and then we saw things with COVID around xenophobia um, I think um, that just the, my priority would be lobbying the university wherever possible to collaborate with students understand where safety issues are and what can be done um, to help Great, thank you. Um, Kiara? Um, I agree. I think that there's everyone's going to have so many different issues depending on who they are as a person. Um, and it's kind of is difficult to know where to begin. Um, I would have to say I think safety is probably a big one as well, um, like Matt said, just because there is so much going on and probably so much that will still keep going on. Um, and it's just to kind of bring it to the uni's attention. And I think just to be transparent about what they're actually doing to tackle it is the main thing again kind of that communication where yes we've got ways to report it but how does it get higher up and how does it feed back down if that makes sense um, and then um, also student well-being and things like that they are so overworked to just kind of assist in that way and to bring that to everyone's attention as well thank you and finally Shuan please yeah uh, I think uh, uh, I, I agree with uh, Matt. I think uh, uh, we should to focus on the students itself because uh, the uh, 
uh, nowadays uh, maybe uh, such situations is more and more and so uh, maybe we should to f focus on the students as uh, a willful and uh, their uh, thinking way and uh, uh, because uh, maybe uh, we should to uh, enhance their uh, uh, they they are uh, aware about the, the part protect them themselves and then to start more so uh, to avoid such a situation I think so all of the, uh, the them I think uh, uh, is uh, or ideas I want to say, say is mine thank you great thank you um, I think we're gonna have another question from the audience so if I got a show of hands Liz here you go. Hello. Um, I was wondering, since there are a lot of a lot of international students at the university, and, and some of them may may feel as if they're like s scared to join societies because they're th they're new to the country and, and not sure if they'll fit in, or, or or not sure if they can speak the language well enough. Like, how would you plan to try to make international students feel included in societies? Um, and we're going to start with Kiara first, please. <laughs> um, as an international student myself, um, I can resonate a bit with this. And um, working as an activities assistant with Give or Go, we see so many international students. And I think they're just so keen to get involved. I think that um, provided we give them the opportunities, and we, do had, we did have the Refreshers Fair, for example, um, to just get them involved. And I think if they are, I suppose, feeling a bit unsure i think again being that approachable presence that they can come to you about what societies they interested in or what activities they want to do um, and then you kind of because you'll know all the societies and where their interests probably lie um, and then again if any queries or problems come up as an activities officer you can always be there to help and direct them great thank you um harris yeah, so again, like I said earlier, first of all, because I'm not an international student, I'm not going to assume that I know um, what their perception of the university is, so I'm going to talk to them first and foremost, and my you know, established position within the industry gives me the ability to do that through activity, through go volunteer, through media. I have the ability to kind of talk to them, speak to them. But one thing I've noticed over the years is, and I noticed this uh, when I was on the Committee of Islamic Society, is that students, um, some international students tend to kind of form their own you know, groups and then staying there and I can understand it as someone who is you know an ethnic minority the kind of comfort of staying in your own uh, situation so I want to you know find out what it is that's kind of creating that access that barrier to access and you know like before then I can overcome it once I actually know great thank you um Xuan, please yeah, I'm an international student, so actually I think uh, the uh, for international student uh, about the language is a big problem. Uh, but uh, I think uh, um, uh, uh, I think the way we can to uh, improve the situation and uh, can uh, let the international students students uh, to focus on this uh, uh, caps uh, environment maybe the. Uh, uh, I know uh, they have uh, one classes uh, in two class, so maybe uh, or uh, activities office or we can to contact uh, with uh, into class and uh, to uh, make some activities and to uh, just like uh, maybe uh, the camping or test uh, with uh, to in, in uh, to uh, enhance the relation relationship with uh, international student to let them to learn more and uh, uh, give it a go and uh, go volunteer is uh, uh, yes is a very good uh, way to enhance them but someone they want to focus on this maybe so we, we can uh, do some advertising thank you great thank you uh, Lily please um, to sort of echo what the others have said I think give it a go is really, really important. Um, we too saw in um, in rounders especially that give it a go did attract a lot of international students. It also gave opportunity for people to bring their friends. Um, again, like Harris said, people do group together with the people they feel most comfortable with. And we have no desire to split that up, bring everyone along. So I think that give it a go gives that a good opportunity. Um, the other thing I'll mention as well, actually, and I thought of this earlier when we were on about rooms, um, into Newcastle Uni have always been very, very keen to host events from societies. They have a lot of rooms up there, a lot of space, and that will, again, increase the amount of international students and opportunities and diversity within societies. So I think working with, with INTO would be really useful. 
Great, thank you. Um, Matt? Um, yeah, so I think actually my society is probably in the minority. Most of our members are international students, um, which is great. There's definitely appetite there for, the pe for international students to join societies. And I think one great way that I don't think anyone touched on do this is completely util utilising the um, International Welcome Week. I think it would be so beneficial if there was more of a push for societies to get involved in this way somehow, you know, before Freshers Fair, when international students are getting here before the rest of the um, home student body. Um, I think that especially because um, it can be quite an overwhelming situation if it, it's maybe not as busy an atmosphere. Um, so I think that um, integration in Welcome Week would be really um, helpful. Great, thank you everyone. Um, we're gonna have another question from me, <laughs> sorry. Um, following the pandemic, the needs of students have changed. So for example, many students also want their involvement in societies to contribute to the career pr progression and things like that. So how will you ensure that um, like students' needs and what they want are catered for? Um, and also on the kind of topic of the pandemic, many societies found over the past two years that engagements have dropped. Um, what will you do to try and boost this engagement back to pre-pandemic levels? Um, and I have to ask someone first. Um, uh, Harris, go on then. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because I was get saved having to mention in my closing speech. Um, but absolutely, COVID has impacted societies heavily, some more than others. And, um, you know, liberal societies in particular, Dan's talking about the gap, are struggling massively. And they're hard of societies to get engagement in the first place, even though very important ones. And the pandemic has, you know, fractured that and it's fractured many others, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, we're still very much in the recovery period of that. I. I you know, specialised helping <laughs> recover society. That's what I've been doing for, for a whole bunch of my life. I've formed new societies from scratch, and I've taken societies that have been struggling and made them into award-winning societies. That has factually happened. So I think that experience is what means that I can, you know, it's going to be different for each society, so I can't give you a, a, a coverall answer. That'd be ridiculous. I have to go to each individual society, see what their aims are, what their barriers to access are, um, and how COVID specifically has affected them. But, you know, my vast experience would make me, the, you know, ideal to kind of give them the advice they would need to then hopefully get back to the state that they were before. You know, it's a recovery period. It'll take time. Hopefully not too much longer, though. Um, and hopefully I'll be the best person to help with that. Great. Thank you. Um, Joanne, please. Oh, yeah, I think uh, um, maybe um, we should do some education uh, with students because uh, some, some some of these uh, maybe they they have no experience about that, uh, so uh, they 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 haven't uh, uh, go going to their social. Uh, so maybe we can to organize some uh, uh, organizations to make uh, the students to party uh, take part in um, just like a MOOC uh, society and uh, uh, to do some uh, uh, the other. Uh, Oh, how to say this? Sorry, so just that a uh, different, uh, the same uh, situation to them, and to tell them that uh, such a situation, uh, that uh, this uh, is not very, uh, you know, uh, good or not, not, not very simple. Just like they think, <laughs> I think this is a good way. To, so we, we can to uh, to do some uh, uh, the specific uh, activities. Not not uh, that uh, uh, this this happened, and then they they can know this is uh, the travel. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Matt. Um, yeah. So, going on from COVID, COVID, in my experience, and um, particularly member recruitment has been probably terrible. Um, we've tried everything. We've put on free food to try and get people to just come to an event, um, and I think really. One of my key points in my manifesto is just the whole package of more support for society committees. I think um, fully utilizing university channels by identifying society with low memberships, whether that um, be that they've contacted us or um, that we've identified, you know, um, that they struggle to meet their 15 members. Um, and, you know, going off the package of membership recruitment tools, whether it's advertising, um, a reassessment of the members grant after Christmas, I think is something that really helps. Um, because, and then just showing what kind of events can be put on um, and just trying to help every society get members where possible because there are, they are out there. Great, thank you. Um, Lily. Um, I think firstly, it's, it, it's important to remember that, I mean, COVID's not over, but it's, it's sort of only recently that it's kind of been over. 
Um, I think a lot of students, you know, have, have had two years, you know, if they started when, when COVID started, um, have had two, three years now where they, they have been able to attend or if it's outdoors or with people, blah, 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 lots and lots of rules. And actually it's only in the past few months that those rules have relaxed and that we're able to kind of begin again as we did before the pandemic. So I think that's important to remember. I think um, in terms of boosting memberships, I think bringing friends to um, society events is really good. Maybe sort of subsidized memberships if you bring along a friend or something like that. Um, and I think as well, like giving societies training on how to host events that will attract people, how, or not just events, but kind of how, how to, to bring in um, more members. You have a, a wave of students now, especially some people who will be on committees who aren't, haven't had that experience of committees before COVID, and I think that's really important to bring back. Thank you. Um, and finally, Kiara, please. Um, in your first point, when you talked about the careers, I think that just being involved in that society gives them something to talk about in interviews, that they've got their teamwork. And obviously, when you do recruit um, your new committee, you do say that this will look great on your CV kind of thing. Maybe also just explaining why that would also help. And in terms of engagement, I think, like Lily said, it's been two years. And if they're kind of in their second or third year and things are start slowly starting to get back to normal, societies may not have been the priority this year, unfortunately. And I think also committees not being fully prepared really did lead out to burnout in a lot of committees. And I think just making sure that, again, because a lot of those people might not have been in the society itself and are now thrown in the committee role, um, to make sure that there is adequate training. Great, thank you. Um, Harris, do you want to ask a question? A lot of you talked about crossover with societies and volunteering. Uh, we do already have Go Volunteer Department in the SU. So how would your policies offer something different to this, or how would you work around this? I'll start with Dilly. I think I'd like it to be easier for societies as a whole to um, sort of engage in volunteering projects. Um, I remember it was not so long ago we had like student volunteer week and I didn't know anything about it and then I got an email and it's and I think like actually having dedicated weeks is probably a really good idea but where you can advertise to societies um, of, of all sizes to say okay uh, a group of 15 people from your society or whatever are going to fair share um, would you like to sign up for that project or would you like to sign up for something else and here's a week every term where that is a priority um, to engage societies as a whole to, to then go along to volunteering projects. All right, thank you. Uh, Harris? It's not something I mentioned in the manifesto, but I think if there was a, a demand to kind of uh, take that approach, um, it's, you know, students are, uh, are extremely busy, they have a lot of play, a lot of stress, a lot of academic work as well, the society commitments. Um, so I think if we're wanting to encourage them to do more volunteering, to give more, back more to the community, because I'm sure the, the desire is there, it's just a case of, emotional labor, um, it's making sure that they adequately have kind of the recognition that they deserve, because frankly, students are amazing, everyone, every student's amazing, and for volunteering in any capacity, and I think we, as long, we need to make sure that we recognize that as much as we can, because um, then that feeling of kind of satisfaction that you've actually made a difference and being able to see that is what brings you back to do more. Right, uh, Matt? Um, yeah, so I'm very passionate about volunteering. Um, I've been doing it pretty much my whole time at uni. Um, I think that, well, one of the main parts of my manifesto is all about making it easier for societies to give back. And I think one of the key ways to do that, as Harris said, people have a lot of work on their, on their plates, um, are quite busy, and one of my main points is making it easier for the existing committees to put on things like fundraising events. I think having a set of dedicated tools and advice for that would be really beneficial. I think um, another thing in my manifesto is crossover with um, Go Volunteer. I know the volunteering fair is a great way of getting people who are interested in making a difference. And one thing I would like to see is, as well as Freshers' Fair, those societies that are focused on giving back, whether it be charity or social issues, can get involved in the Go Volunteer Fair, where that target audience is there. Because I know for me, in Freshers' Fair, we'd see people walk to the sort of charity section and do a 180. <laughs> Um, so I think having that position in the, go in the volunteering fair would be really helpful in getting members. Right, uh, Zwan? 
Oh yeah, uh, I know some some students. Uh, they they want to be a, a volunteer, but sometimes they uh, they just have some excuse. Uh, they have no time. They are so busy. Uh, uh, they don't know about, about that. Mm, so I think uh, maybe we should to change some uh, uh, some some or organizing well, way to uh, uh, to motivate uh, a student to be a volunteer. Just uh, like uh, give a uh, gift. Uh, or give some uh, financial uh, support, uh, or uh, uh, just like there, there are different way than to uh, maybe uh, different uh, activities to make different uh, make a, uh, all of the students to try try more to take part um, take a, t uh, participate in such activities. Thank you. And finally, Kiara. Um, I think because again students are so busy that Go Volunteer is amazing and offering its one-off opportunities and they can also then facilitate um, continuous ones if you want as well um, and I think similar how to we used to fill out Google Forms to do like Instagram takeovers um, we could do something like that and um, the Go Volunteer team is really lovely in helping organize that and also if you want to do anything else they can very willing to help you and direct you in that right way um, and I think that point about having the societies itself that um, give back involved in that fair would actually be a really good idea to then make them aware of the society so they don't even have to look that far. It is just in the union building. Um, and I think, again, s students will, if they want to volunteer, they'll come to these events. But I think just making sure that they're advertised enough in advance is probably a good thing as well. Great, thank you. Um, we're going to have one more audience question before closing st closing statement. Um, okay. uh, I had a really enjoyable read over all of your manifestos and enjoyed this debate this evening. Um, and I think always with, with debates and things, there's you always try and link it back to, to your manifesto to push across your, your strongest points um, because that's what you're passionate about most. But what's what's something that you've not mentioned your manifestos and you've not mentioned in the debate so far uh, give a give me a reason as to why I should why I should vote for you and how you're gonna enhance the student experience um, we're gonna start with you and flat please uh, yeah uh, uh, actually, just that I mentioned before, uh, uh, I have so many experiences, uh, not not just uh, work experience. Actually, uh, actually, I have some uh, organized uh, activities in social and uh, in uh, uh, university. So uh, I think uh, I'm very familiar with uh, students who uh, like such activities and uh, uh, why they don't, why they should to uh, take part, uh, take uh, take part in just like uh, activities and how to emotion their uh, passion to join us so uh, uh, and uh, I think uh, you know I'm an activities go and so, uh, I, I like smell and I all of my friends said, said that uh, I can uh, bring some you know good opportunities uh, and uh, their energy to them so uh, I think uh, I'm very sure for this position yeah uh, I have confidence thank you Great, thank you. Uh, Kiara, please. Um, I think I've got quite a good varied experience being both involved in societies and a dance club teacher and also volunteering. And so I think taking all those different pieces means I know a lot about what goes on in the union. And I'm also not afraid to kind of figure out anything I don't know and to, um, if someone comes to a question that I don't know, I'm not going to, if I need to direct them somewhere else, I will. But if not, I will find out how to answer that question. Um, I think just integration within the union is something that's so important as well. We've got all these opportunities, but again, a lot of people aren't aware of them. Um, and to kind of just make it more con congruent, is that far away? Probably not. Um, but just to kind of get all the volunteering and that together and getting the international students involved. Um, and again, just being there supportive. Um, I've been in a committee during COVID, coming out of COVID, and obviously hopefully this next year will be a lot better, fingers crossed. Um, so to kind of just provide that support and that training, and if there is anything that gets flagged, to know that it will be solved. Great, thank you. Um, Lily? I think I would like to see some changes um, based on student safety. Um, I think that when students come here obviously they might be in different environments in different countries uh, might be the first time they've ever lived away from home 
and especially in situations where they're vulnerable um, where potentially when they've been drinking I think it's really important that we do what we can to protect those students so I think firstly I'd like um, clubs in town and, and bars to come to us and tell us what are they doing to protect people from spiking um, things like drink covers um, extra security things like that things that we can then list and say you know that, that this bar or this club is taking extra steps I think that's really important um, and also mental health first aid training I think it's given a standard at Northumbria Uni um, to all committee members I think it should be here it's really important it's just as important as your physical health and I think that to, to help people when they're in that sort of vulnerable position is really important for, for committee members. Great, thank you. Um, Matt, please. Um, yeah, so something that I haven't mentioned thus far and regrettably not in my manifesto um, is you know environmental consciousness. I think that um, projects like I believe the current Welfare and Equalities Officer is working on um, in reusing waste for I think it's art pieces stuff like that is really um, just a great way of raising awareness about environmental issues if nothing else and I think encouraging our societies and all aspects of student life to be as eco-friendly as possible whether that's working closely with um, societies like XR or Greensock um, I think that there's a lot of good things already happening um, but we can never not, we can never go too far in pushing for an um, uh, eco-friendly, environmentally conscious um, union. Great, thank you. And finally, Harris, please. Yeah, so in my manifesto, in, in so far, I've talked to you a lot about kind of my extensive society experiences, but I've not talked to you on, on my other bus experiences. I'm a member of Tender Ambulance, and I already spend a lot of my time giving back to the local community, working with local authorities, physically using my own hands to keep students safe sometimes on night times out, um, which gives me a lot of kind of uh, insight into kind of keeping shouldn't say if I was a first week organizer back in September, so I have a that experience that vast event organizing, but also an additional line of communication with clubs and with uh, uh, venues around the city. Um, I'm currently a media student, which means I have to go out and talk to the council a lot, which is something that you know all SAPs at some level have to get involved in as part of their kind of general uh, officer role in terms of uh, you know defending and representing student life. Uh, yeah. Societies are a big part of my life, but I don't stop there. I get involved in pretty much every aspect of this and every part um, beyond that as well. And I think it, that helps make me a more rounded candidate as well as my very particular set of skills. Fabulous, right. Um, that's it for questions. Um, well done, everyone. Um, we're gonna move on to closing statements now and I'm gonna start with Matt and then go this way along. Okay, so I mean, first, first and foremost. Okay, one second, you've got one minute and I'm gonna be strict. Um, first and foremost, thanks everyone for listening. Um, I, you know, my manifesto and sort of pitch is all about um, three key areas: giving society committees far more support, um, making it easy for societies to give back locally, nationally, and internationally, and um, making the union work for every member be an inclusive, equal, and safe place. Um, I think that um, you know, a focus on safety is necessary. And if you want all those things, vote Matt for that. And as a little side note, if you have any more questions, catch me in the cut later on tonight. Thank you. Um, is you Anne, please? Okay, um, <clears throat> I believe that I'm very suitable for this position and can bring uh, innovation and different uh, harvester to students. So uh, if you want to know, know more about me and uh, uh, or have so many, uh, so have some questions, uh, you can add my, uh, uh, Facebook and Ins is Xuan uh, Liu. They're the one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Harris now? I refer you back to the similar premise I offered you at the beginning of my uh, of this debate. Experience means less time acclimatizing, less time learning, more time doing, more time helping. I've already been improving the student experience. I've been doing that all along. Um, creating opportunities, making it more inclusive, and all of this has been formally recognized. And also, if you don't like me, you should still vote for me, and here's why. If I get SAB, I'm constitutionally not allowed to continue working after a year. So... If they don't vote for me, I'll have my continuous part-time work and I'll still be here way, way long. If you don't like me, vote for me. Yeah, I'm gone. I have to be. It's in the Constitution. So win, win, either way. Vote Harris, number one for activities. Thank you. Um, now, Kiara, please. 
Um, so I just want to start off by thanking the production team. You guys all did amazing. And also to my candidates, I honestly enjoyed this so much. Um, so thank you all. Um, and I just want to say, if you want to create, um, help me create a supportive, collaborative, and most importantly, enjoyable student experience, I can use my varied experience, hopefully my approachable presence, and the ability to listen to you and work together with you to support and resolve your queries so you can have the best year possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm finally Lily. I feel like I'm going to struggle to follow Harris on that. Um, thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, thank you for the team for hosting everything. Um, I think I'm the, the best candidate for this job because I genuinely care about making societies better. I want students to access safe and fun environments for socials and society events. And I want to make it easier to tailor these events to gaining new members. Um, I want to reward these efforts by reworking the Earn Your Stars and the incentives. I'm experienced, I'm approachable, and I want to make a positive and thoughtful change to the lives of students. So please follow my socials and vote for me. Thank you. Um, well done to all the candidates and thank you for joining us tonight. And thanks for very rapid closing statements. That was appreciated. Um, that is the end of the debate now. Um, Listen, I'm going to be a little annoying and drone on for a bit, but thank you all for tuning in and coming here. Um, please give Maude and the candidates a big hand. I demand it. Um, yeah, this, is, this has been the Activities Officer debate, and tomorrow, same time, same place, we're going to have the NUS referendum debate and then the presidential debate, which is the last one. So please come to that if you can. Bring your friends. And one last note, uh, please take any cans or wrappers that you brought in with you. There's a bin near the front of the room. And uh, yeah, thank you all for coming. And again, if you have any questions for any of the candidates, please do not hesitate to reach out to them on social media. And remember to vote. Bye-bye, guys. Good night.